Never enough, never, never, never enough. Right here, Hakse. Yeah. Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. This week's video is going to be a theoretical video in which I take a closer look at color theory. Let's first talk about why knowledge of the concept is important. The reason can be summed up in one sentence. Color evokes emotion. And with every piece you create, one of your main goals as an artist should be to elicit emotion from your viewer. When it comes to color, think about it. The different colors bring forth different emotions. For example, bright colors represent happiness, blue calls to mind feelings of serenity, and so on. So being able to use color in the right way is just another building block in your arsenal to achieve emotion. A thing I should mention is that when your goal is to render a piece as realistic as possible, some of the elements of color theory become less important. For example, you don't have to decide on a color scheme since you want to follow the color scheme of your subject. Nevertheless, I think it's still good to have an understanding of color theory. It can make it easier to recreate the colors you see. And if you want to change it up and make a piece where you don't use realistic colors, it can help you build your color scheme and picking colors that invoke the emotion that you are going for. So let's start from the beginning and that is hue. Hue essentially just means what color the color is. Now, let me pull up this image so I can explain this better. As you can see, you are looking at the color wheel. All the colors on this color wheel should appear to have the same lightness and the same saturation, different only by hue. In painting, a hue also refers to a pure pigment, one without a tint or shade. The perfect illustration of this can be seen in the range of colors that are available in Pan Pastel. For example, this is the color Taylor Blue which is the pure pigment. And next to this, we can line up Taylor Blue Tint and Taylor Blue Shade. Now, before moving on to shades and tints, let's look at saturation. This refers to the intensity of the color. An example is going to explain this way better, so let's pull up my drawing software again. On the left here, I started with a vivid blue and I'm going to change the saturation all the way until I reach this gray instead. Now, as I do this, I am not changing how light or dark the color is. I am not changing the color itself. The only thing that is changed is how intense the color is. So on the left, I have a color that is 100% saturated and on the right, I have a color that is 0% saturated. It also doesn't matter with which color I start. 0% saturation will always result in gray. Now the next thing to talk about is lightness, and this is where tints and shades come to play. This basically covers how bright or dark a color is. Let's have a look at this green, which is my pure tone. On the left side I'll mix in some white to make it lighter, and on the right side I'll mix in some black to make it darker. So now we have a green tint, a pure tone, and a green shade. I'm using my pants to sum this up. You start with your pure color here. Adding white to a color results in a tint, and adding black to a color results in a shade. Another term that relates to color theory are color groups. Color groups are essentially color schemes that work great together in one way or another. There are a few well-known color groups out there that you could apply to your artwork. For example, a very famous one is the monochromatic color scheme, which is essentially made up of variations of one color. So the color wheel I made here depicts a monochromatic scheme of the color blue. Another one is an analog color scheme. Now, it doesn't matter which color you start with, just as long as you pick the neighbors to go with them. So you just start with your main color, let's pick green, and then you choose two colors, some people even use three, on either side of it. For example, red, red-orange, and red violet has a very warm feel to it. Another example is blue green, green and yellow green, which creates a very bright and happy feeling. The reason why this color scheme works so well is because you always end up with a group of colors that go hand in hand with each other, making sure it pleases the eye of all potential viewers. Next up we have the complementary colors. These are colors that are opposite from each other on the color wheel. There is a scientific reason why they look so good, namely, the cones in your eyes use a careful balancing act to ensure that you see color correctly, and when two opposite colors enter the eyesight, they stimulate both low-frequency cones and high-frequency cones at the same time. 
but let's simplify that a bit since we're not just professors in biology here. Because of the simultaneous contrast that occurs, both colors will appear brighter and grab a viewer's attention. This is something you can use to your advantage as an artist. Another color group is the triadic color scheme, where you pick three colors that have an even distance between all the colors. This is a variant on the complementary color scheme. There is still this contrast in this piece, yet the combination of these colors tends to be a little bit easier on the eye. Now I have talked about all the different aspects that build your actual colors and which colors look good together, because as an artist you want your artwork to be visually pleasing. The next big part is what these colors mean. I'm just going to cover some of the basic colors here and I won't go into detail too much. Let's dive right in with red. It's a color that draws attention and motivates us to action. It symbolizes action, strength, energy and passion. It's also a universal color to warn and signal caution and danger. Yellow is a color that evokes happiness and optimism. It also affects the logical part of the brain, stimulating mentality and perception. Just like red though, it's also used to signal caution. Moving on to green, known as the color of harmony and health. It is a relaxing color that leaves us feeling safe, hopeful and secure. A negative feeling associated with green is envy. Think about the proverb green with envy. Then let's look at blue next. Blue is known as the color of trust and loyalty. It makes us feel confident, secure, protected and relaxed. All of these things also make it the most conservative and predictable color on the list. Now I'm going to end this short list with black and white. Black is the strongest and most intimidating color out there. It exudes authority and it can make us feel secure and protected. Now on the other hand, it can also represent sadness, dominance and pessimism. And for the last one, let's look at white. This color is known for purity and innocence. It's a very balanced color that invokes hope, openness and perfection. Some negative feelings associated with this color are that it's boring, cold and distant. Now, just a small footnote here, even though these explanations are very universal, it is also very dependent on the culture. To give a good example of this, in the Western world, white is worn by brides and signifies purity. While in the Eastern world, China for example, white signifies mourning and is therefore worn by widows. But enough theory for now, it's only by seeing this in action that you can get a clear sense of what this actually means. Now, since this already is a long video, I decided to split this content into two. So stay tuned to my channel to see that video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel right here so you don't miss out on it. And to keep you busy for now, I have lots of other videos you can go and watch. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And next week, I'll be back when I go on a zoo visit and give you some tips for your photographs in a zoo. In the meantime, I hope you have a great week and I will see you again next Friday. By the way, little side note, in a zoo video, you get to see my mom too. <laughs>